We all have our own idea of our dream home. But the reality is many of us have to put up with houses that just don't work. The kids are living on top of each other. There isn't enough space to do all the things they'd like to do. By the time you've opened this cupboard and this drawer, you can't move and nobody can come in. But it is possible to get more house for less money. Transforming a house into something spectacular might seem unaffordable, but I really believe it is possible to create your dream home for a fraction of the price of going and buying one, if you get it right. Oh, wow, that looks really smart. Beautiful. Last year saw a whopping 164,000 home extensions successfully granted planning permission. But to get it wrong, and a badly designed extension can knock thousands off the value of a house. It's slightly nerve-wracking, because this is our house, which could crumble at any moment. We might be creating a monster. In this series, I'll be following the fortunes of those attempting to radically overhaul smaller homes for a fraction of the cost of buying a bigger one. The headboard of the bed is going to be this far away from someone else on the loo. <laughs> Too close for comfort. It's never a simple undertaking. That's a mission you've set yourself. It is a mission, yeah. yeah. To me, with my bad UCSE maths, yeah. it's four metres. This is going to be a bumpy <laughs> ride, isn't it? I have to brush my teeth in a little small bucket. It's been hell. But the rewards can be immense. Goodness me, how utterly fabulous. I don't really need the rest of the house. It's got everything we need just in this one spot. There can be something magical about a home. It's not just a box that contains our lives. If you can't afford the castle of your dreams, don't give up. Because with bricks and mortar, nearly anything is possible. This week I'm with two families wanting to maximise every inch of potential in their houses without breaking the bank. In Bristol, Neil and Anita and their three kids live in a three-bedroom Edwardian semi with an old shop on one side, which they're hoping to knock down and rebuild as an annex with a separate granny flat for Anita's mum and dad. Their retirement plan is including this now, so if we make the mess of this, you know, it affects their lives, our lives, and you know, we, just, we just cannot fail. But first, I'm off to Poynton in Cheshire, where childhood sweethearts Jackie and Russell are desperate to get to work on their run-down property. Jackie and Russell Walker bought their 1930s semi three years ago, planning to extend it in some way. And then Russell lost his job, and so three years later, they're still camping in a house that wasn't really working for them at the time. And now's the time they want to take action. Russell got a job as a business development manager nearly a year ago. They've got a big new mortgage and are planning a gigantic extension. Thank goodness, you know, you're working now, but it was hard work. It was very tough on the family. And it put a lot of strain on our marriage and as a family unit, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, did. I can see the future now. We can get the property done and dusted and see our sort of, what we looked at nearly three years ago, come into fruition. Hi, hello. Hi, I'm Sarah. Sarah. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. With two kids and one of them in a tiny box room, they're growing out of their semi. But its location could be better. This is your kids' school, and your house is just over the road. Yeah, it's literally just a stone's throw away. We're really lucky. Are you from this area? I've always lived here all my life. I've been here for 32 years. In fact, I went to the same school as my daughter and son. You've got deep roots. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's such a lovely place to live. Their 30 semi cost them £220,000 three years ago. But what does their ideal house in this area look like if they had the budget? So in a perfect world, these are the sort of houses that you'd really like to go and buy. Oh, yes. yeah, definitely. yeah, definitely. Yeah. I like this one here because it's a traditional um, mm. detached property. It ticks every box, you know. We want to have the kitchen 
and the dining room table all in together with plus, you know, a nice family seating area so that all times, you know, we're all together. To buy a house like this, you'd need a good 450,000, probably getting closer to 500,000. Mm. And at the moment, your house is worth about 220, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And, and you don't have a spare couple of hundred thousand? No, no, no. no. 250,000. No. You do have some money put aside, yeah. don't you? Yeah, we have money put aside. 100,000 pound. Maximum. Maximum, yeah. Jackie and Russell would need an extra £270,000 to buy their perfect property. That they don't have, but they've been able to borrow £100,000 to try and create their dream where they live now. It's actually quite a good size 1930s house, but what's most noticeable is that it's on a very leafy tree-lined street, and that's something to look out for because it'll always add value to a home. At the moment, there's a very standard layout. On the ground floor, there's a lounge, dining room and a miniature kitchen. Upstairs there are two doubles and one very small bedroom and a family bathroom. But there's a giant clue in the garage that this house just isn't working for the Walker family. Most of their kitchen appliances are in here. Must be a very small kitchen inside. So this is your existing kitchen, yeah. which, which you're not a great fan no. of. No, I hate it. By the time you've opened this cupboard and this drawer, you know, it's all pretty cramped, mm. and I'm presumably uh, opening the oven, oven is yeah, pretty tight. As soon as you've got that oven door, you can't move and nobody can come in, you know. Jackie and Russell have got very big plans for their outdated semi. Their new kitchen will be four times the size, with a massive curved breakfast bar and a family dining area. There's a loo, a utility room and a built-in garage. Plus a formal dining room and a large living room looking out over the garden. It's great they're able to extend the kitchen so much, but I'm a bit concerned about the design. The kitchen you're ending up with is a really bizarre layout. It's blocked off by a breakfast bar. You've got to go out of the kitchen, down the corridor and back into the dining space to get to the other side of the breakfast yeah. bar. Or you can pole vault over the top, which... It's not ideal, is it? No. no. Well, it's something to think about. We yeah. can have a look at it. Jackie doesn't seem terribly convinced, and there are more layout issues with their plans for the upstairs, where the whole extension will be given a ginormous master bedroom with huge dressing room and ensuite. The family bathroom, old master bedroom, and Esme and Joseph's bedrooms remain the same. Personally, I think it's a bit of a crazy use of space. The new en suite alone will be as big as five-year-old Joseph's bedroom. So this is your smallest bedroom at the moment? Yeah, this is Joseph's um, box room. OK, it is quite wee, isn't it? <laughs> Tiny. The whole extension at the moment, the plan is to have a bedroom and a massive, huge walk-through dressing room and an enormous bed bathroom at the other yeah. end. I mean, dressing rooms... They're great if you've got so much space you don't know what to do with it. And so many clothes. And so many clothes, yeah. thousands of clothes. And I kind of think, unless you're Joan Collins with the Hollywood mansion, actually a wardrobe is a really good solution and yeah. doesn't take up so much space. After waiting so long to extend their house, it would seem a terrible shame if they made some big mistakes. I think there's a much better use of space upstairs. They could turn the planned Hollywood-sized dressing room and ensuite into a fourth bedroom. And Joseph's old bedroom would be perfect as a shower room. The plans are quite old. Now Sarah's given us the ideas of and inspiration of looking at different ways to utilise that space. Yeah, definitely food for thought. In Bristol, Anita and Neil paid £158,000 for their three-bed property with Derelict Shop 18 months ago. And they've got big plans on a small budget. They're planning to build a separate flat plus garage and to convert the loft. This needs to become a house for seven, three kids plus granny and granddad. But if they did have more available cash, this is the house in the area they think would be perfect to buy. So what is it about it that you love? It's just the, the size of it, the, the space. The layout is what we are really going for. And like the idea of having the garage right there, this is our Fantastic, dream house. Fantastic, yeah. <laughs> it is. 
To buy this house, Neil and Anita would need £420,000. Their house is worth about £170,000, so they'd have to find an extra £250,000 to move here. But their budget is just £50,000. Sadly, we can't afford it. OK, so you do look at houses like this and think, oh, God, in our dreams, we'd just buy one just like that. <laughs> Wish we could. Wish we could, yeah. <laughs> Maybe when we really win the lottery. <laughs> Right now, where they live couldn't be further from their dream. It's a big house, but it's in poor condition. But what's exciting about it is this retail unit next door. It's effectively a lean-to. The only problem that I see at the moment with rebuilding it is that there's a lot of signs of drain runs being around this area. There in the corner over here, and then again, two manholes over here. I'm quite sure what's going on with the drains, but that would need to be properly checked out. Hopefully, it won't be a major problem, though. In Anita and Neil's three-bedroom semi, downstairs, there's a living room, dining room, kitchen and bathroom. Next door is the old single-storey shop. Upstairs is the master bedroom, plus a double and a small single room and a tiny bathroom. Neil and Anita want more bedroom space for themselves and the kids, but most of all, they want a multi-generational home for them and Anita's parents, Dudley and Jean. Mum and Dad have suggested in the past that wouldn't it be a nice idea if we all lived together as a big, happy family? <laughs> and how do you feel about that? It's a dream come true, really, to have them close by. Oh, yeah. brilliant. And yeah. then you can help with the kids and, you know... Yeah. And then oh, you I can... don't know about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Electrician Neil and part-time accountant Anita are paying £20,000 for the garage and loft conversion, while grandparents Dudley and Jean are putting in £30,000 for their new place. The plan is to demolish the shop and build a garage and gym for Neil on the ground floor. Above the garage, they want to build a grandparent flat with a kitchen living room and a bedroom with ensuite shower and toilet. And Anita and Neil aim to convert the entire roof into a master bedroom with ensuite. Anita's mum and dad will be splitting their retirement between South Africa and Bristol. But even if they're only here for four months a year, I'm a bit concerned about the size of their new UK base. The space that you're looking at upstairs um, for next door is going to be quite wee, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's quite a small space. Yeah. What's the ground floor going to be at the moment? There's going to be a garage, possibly a little gym for myself out the back. Are you? Do you go to the gym a lot? Not as much as I would like. I don't think you need a gym. I think you need a bit more living space for you guys. Is that really unpopular to say? Right. You're thinking, give me back my gym! <laughs> <laughs> Neil plans to save money by doing all the wiring and plumbing with father-in-law Dudley. I wonder if Neil realises just what he's taking on. Are you also a very keen handyman? I would like to think so, yeah. I think my wife complains I don't do enough. Does he not do enough? He doesn't do enough. Anywhere near mm. enough. Does he do enough? <laughs> We're still waiting for our supper, Soon. Neil. Do you feel that like you're now a victim in I'm all picked this? On, yes. <laughs> oh, is he picked on? Is he picked on by me? Sometimes. These? There's, only, there's only one way to stop it all. Just get all the jobs done. That's that, exactly. We won't nag you if you just get all Finish. the jobs done. I won't nag you. <laughs> this yeah. is going to be a bumpy ride, isn't it? <laughs> I did get a bit slated a bit by, by my wife and Sarah, <laughs> but I think that's just a woman thing, I think. <laughs> if there was more boys here, it would be a different story. There's an awful lot of work to do with this house and some very strong characters involved in the build. Fundamentally, the key issue here, though, is how you have two separate homes that work together and separately in unison. I'm helping two families achieve their dream of transforming and expanding houses to create the perfect home on a budget. In Cheshire, the enormous extension Jackie and Russell Walker have been waiting to start for three years is finally underway. Can't wait now for it to all get cracking and yeah. get on. 
But there's bad news in Bristol. Anitra and Neil have been forced to delay their £50,000 build after discovering that there are public sewer pipes under the old shop. Because there's a sewer running directly underneath where we want to build and, and our foundations have got to go across it, we need to get permission from Wessex Water to start the build. Without their permission, building control won't sign off anything and we can't, we can't move on the build. Incredibly frustrating, I can't tell you. <laughs> The sewer investigation is costing £370, but it could cost them thousands if they end up having to move the sewer or protect it. If you're building an extension, you should always check for any public sewers that may run beneath or close by. They'll be owned by your local water and sewerage company. They and your local council should have maps you can consult for free. After a tense four-week wait, there's some good news. Anita and Neil get the go-ahead for their build. But as work begins, it seems their drainage problems aren't over yet. It's just not been done properly, to be honest. It just looks like it's been chucked together under the ground. Uh, there's various plastic pipes mixed in with the old ceramic pipes, which have not had proper joints done. We're going to get all of it renewed in case we get blockages in the future. This costs a further £1,300 taking their overspend close to £2,000. And work is only just on the way. I'm back in Cheshire to see how the Walkers are progressing with their 98 square metre extension that's doubling the size of their house. Partly because of Russell's redundancy, Jackie and him have waited three years to get this extension. I'm hoping it's well underway. It's great to see the foundations in and the walls going up. I'm hoping this will help them understand their new space better. Personally, I think the design of their breakfast bar isn't really working at all. Rain has stopped the building work, so this is my chance to pitch them a different design. I've cobbled together an alternative breakfast bar out of some rather damp cardboard boxes. Now, I know you've struggled with envisaging just how the kitchen's going to look. Oh, yeah. And, and this wall, obviously, is coming down. Yeah. And you were hoping to have a curved breakfast bar over here. The downside to having a curve is that you'd enter at one end and then you'd get stuck in the middle and you yeah. couldn't get out without either leaping over or walking back around. I think yeah. it would drive you mad. It's not going to work, work, really. No. If you're going to have a peninsula unit, you're better off with a straight one like this that enables you to access all the way around. Are you completely set on having a peninsula? Yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. If we didn't have something like that peninsula there, it just feel like in one big room, there'd be a kitchen shoved over into a corner. And, um, and I think that's where I'd be, just shoved into a corner. And I don't want to be in the corner. I want to be in the centre of it all. I want to be in the centre of it all. If planned well, no one has to be stuck in a kitchen corner. An island or peninsula can work wonders, but check you have enough room. You'll need at least a metre gap around it for a walkway. Soften your kitchen with curves or simplify with clean lines. For ultimate flexibility, put your islands on wheels. The kitchen is the most expensive room in the house, so always get an expert to help you with your design. To find out more about islands and peninsulas, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash bd. For Jackie and Russell, it's not just their kitchen peninsula they need to rethink. There's no window on this wall at all. And, you know, looking at it, I think when you're in this space, it's going to be really quite dark yeah. in here. Now would be absolutely the last moment yeah. that you could add yeah. a window in this wall. And I fear there's another problem with their plans for this really important room. Their doors are in a very strange place. I also wonder why the doors are pointing in this direction, and why there's not doors at the end. Because if you have doors at the end, then that goes up the garden. Why are yeah. the doors on the side? Good question. And then you get sight lines all the way down the garden, and it would be yeah. lovely yeah. in here. To be honest, I've not even really looked at it, isn't I think you should look at it. Yeah. yeah. That's my, my thought on that. Jackie and Russell are not alone in struggling to try and visualise how plans will look in real life. But if they don't make decisions that are right at this stage, it's going to start costing them an awful lot of money in the long run. In Bristol, after a slow and expensive start to the Greens' plan to upsize, Neil and Anita are now four weeks in with their builder project managing. 
But the garage and annex are up and they're up to the roof level. That's pretty good progress. Great. But personally, I think they should have another look at the decision to give only the first floor to the granny flat. Neil wants this downstairs area as a gym, but I hope this augmented reality app might help convince him otherwise. So do you slightly struggle visualising how it's going to be when it's finished? Uh, it's the sizes we're just struggling with. I do, with. yes. I think it's hard to imagine how much room Mum and Dad will have. OK. Well, I want to suggest something to you. This is what you're going to currently have when it's finished. So let's be honest, it's a very big garage considering the amount of space your parents have got upstairs, which is quite a small little flat. This should make it very clear what this ground floor could be used for, and I don't mean pumping iron. You should really think about doing this. And that's putting your wall in, cut off the back of the garage, and you make a room. And then a door to next door, so that when your parents are here, they can use this back space as a sitting room. They can look out over the garden. They have a door through so that when they're babysitting, they can get through to your kids without having to go outside and back in. A connecting door would be great if they can afford it. But the most important thing is that they put this great space to the best possible use. It's part of the resistance to this that you want it for your own gym. I would like my gym back, yeah. <laughs> You're thinking, hands off the space for your gym. Not quite the response I was hoping for, but there's still just time for a change of heart. Even the most limited areas, like the back of the Greens garage, can have great potential. This nine square metre self-contained apartment in South Kensington, London, is proof that amazing things can happen in very small spaces. Now look at this bathroom. The tiny bathroom is a watertight wet room. Now this is the living space. So this area here is a worktop, but you can pull it out. And not only does it unveil a hob and a sink, but also with these two stools, you can sit either side of it here and have a dinner party. A sleeping platform completes this ultra-modern jewel of a flat. If extending isn't an option, look at ways you can maximise every square centimetre you have, doubling up functions and searching out imaginative storage solutions. Up in Cheshire, nearly two and a half months into the Walker's build, and it's a critical point as six steel supports are about to go in. Today is um, quite a stressful day. Uh, we've got quite a few people here to do the steel work. Jackie's dad is a retired builder, and he's lending a hand with project managing and construction. 75 past that choice. You can see. Two point two. This is the big one. This is it now. Yeah, once we've got all these steels in, after that it's just banging the roof on and job's a good one. The five and a half metre 200 kilogram support has to be very carefully inched into position. Yeah, go on, yeah, yeah. It's directly below their six thousand pound bathroom, the only room that was finished before Russell was made redundant nearly three years ago. If there's any movement after we've took all the supports down, then there's a chance that the wall could move and our floor to ceiling tiles could just crack. If anything goes wrong, then we are snookered and it's going to cost a lot of money because I'll have to retail my bathroom, literally. What? <laughs> We're not cracking all tiles, are we? <laughs> If there's any one that would have been a crack, it would have been the floor one. I thought. Well, the it. floor ones? These at this end here. It's an anxious moment for Jackie. And I can't see any cracks. Result. God, thank God for that. Business development manager Russell usually works from home, but there's so much noise he's had to move into a temporary office, parked in a neighbour's drive. He's getting to the point where he's really, really um, struggling and we've not even not through yet. But there's a solution that could save Russell's sanity now and in the future. And it's at a similar property not far from them. So this is what I wanted to show you, which is effectively a home office in the garden. So it's like having a shed, mm. but 
It's insulation. A, a very yeah. posh shed. So inside, you've got this lovely warm space. They range from, from a fully insulated building that you can have as your home office that's three metres by three metres. You can get them from three grand. Yeah. It'd be a great way to get out of the house and actually not necessarily put my suit on, but go take that walk, commute yeah. to the um, business, effectively, on it. Right now, you could use it as a home office. Yeah. Later on, the kids could have a playroom out there, they could yeah. have a sitting room out there. One thing I guarantee is that you'll get value for money out of yeah. it. If you make the decision today, yeah. in a week's time, you'd be sitting at your desk That's in the right. office, not in the car, yeah. which would Great. probably work better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In recent years, there's been a huge rise in the number of people working full time from home. And there's now a great range of garden offices to suit every kind of budget. Being completely separate can really take the stress out of working from home. And so I'm hoping that Jackie and Russell will embrace the idea of spending a bit less on the kitchen and having a garden office that will be a very good investment. I'm with two families who want to dramatically improve and increase the space in their own homes for a fraction of the price of buying their dream house. In Cheshire, Jackie and Russell Walker had to wait three years to start their 100,000 hand extension after Russell was made redundant. But they're now three months into their project. So I'm coming along cracking. Mm, at least over halfway there, hopefully. Fingers a bit crossed. More, a bit more. Yeah. It's a massive build, but it's been going OK so far. In Bristol, after two months, the roof is now on the annex and the builders have moved on to the loft of the main house, which will be a master bedroom suite for Anita and Neil. Right. Electrician Neil is doing the wiring with father-in-law Dudley. This is going all the way up to the light switch here. Neil is only free to work in the evenings and weekends. But Dudley is cracking the whip. Most of the time, the young man says, oh, no, it's time to go to bed. And I said, no, let's, come on, let's just do this bit. And then we go to bed. And nine times out of 10, I win. And we go the little extra mile before he goes to bed. But you need, need, he, Neil needs his beauty sleep. Man. I finish work at past four, and I come straight here and work. Then Dudley comes round, watch the tea's being cooked, and says, right, let's go. Let's rock and roll. Let's do something. And I'm like, well, I've been doing stuff, and now it's time for tea. We go and do another hour or two, and that's work done. It's gone. One cool feature in their loft conversion is a balcony-style window. The top opens upwards and the bottom section swings up to form a safe internal balcony. A window like this will set you back more than £2,000, but will make the most of any views from the top of your house. Maximising natural light should always be a top priority in a loft conversion. And there are some fantastic new styles of roof window to choose from. Group several together for maximum impact. Dormers add headroom, but a roof window can bring in up to 40% more light. The loft bedroom is a straightforward design, but Anita and Neil's self-contained annex is a tougher nut to crack. I hope visiting a successful conversion will get these two to consider giving the flat the area that Neil wants for his gym. This used to be an outbuilding and they converted it into a granny annex. One of the reasons this works is flexibility, and that's the key. You can have your privacy, or you can be connected. You can knit through next door in your pajamas, or you can lock it and you can have a more formal separation. So up here, it is a bit bigger than the upstairs of the shop next door to yours, but I think however small the space is, if it's on two floors, it does feel bigger, bigger sure. because it has a sense of a house yeah. rather than the sense of a studio flat. Yeah. I do see what you mean. Anita and Neil still have time to give their self-contained flat more space and connect it to the main house. Doing this will also increase the resale value of their property. Spread over two floors does make it feel like a house, a bit bigger, even though the dimensions may not be that big. Definitely for the downstairs linking into the main house. It's given some Definitely. inspiration. I think my parents would appreciate it. I think it's a good idea. If you want to find out more about designing a multi-generational home, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie.
In Cheshire, Russell and Jackie are four months into building their extension. They're about to knock through from their old house. But this should be an exciting moment. But there's a dark cloud on the horizon. How's it all going up there? We're just about to knock through, but we've uh, Russell's had some bad news, and unfortunately, he's been made redundant. Oh my goodness, that's awful. Yeah. God, I'm so sorry. It's hard for Russell to have to go through it again. I've been in this situation before, um, so I'm more positive than possibly Jackie. It's just awful. It's devastating. You know. I mean. Just getting a little bit upset, Sarah. Oh. oh, God, you poor things. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. It's such an awful time. What's going to happen? I mean, do you have any idea as to what you're going to do? I think, well, it's no point in stopping it. Just crack on, carry on, and I'll do what I need to do. So I can sort of push the builders. I'll help them out, and that'll cut on labour costs. Good. Well, that's a good attitude to have. Yes, it's all working that way. And I think stay focused. You yeah. will indeed, yeah. Well, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. See bye, you. Bye. 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 Russell now has two really important priorities. One is to try and work on the site to make sure the costs are as low as possible, but also he needs to focus on finding another job. In a way, when disaster strikes, it's foot down the accelerator and get to the finishing line quicker. In Bristol, things are looking brighter. The Green family are coming to the end of their build, with the new granny flat almost ready for dubbing the jean. That's what every retired uh, couple should have, to be honest. Personally, and, uh, I'm happy just having a hot shower at the end of the day, somewhere to cook my meal, nice settee to watch your telly. What more do you want? It will be nice. Sit in the sun, holding hands in our retirement. Anita and Neil bought their house not only to accommodate them and their three children, but also Anita's parents when they retire. But with limited time and resources, I'm just wondering how far they got. Before they started, the Greens' house was a tight squeeze for a family of five, and the derelict shop next door was just an ugly add-on. Now they've created a home big enough for all seven of them. So they've really fulfilled the potential of this house, and at the same time, they've cleaned up the whole of the end of this street. I'm dying to see inside and find out what they decided to do with the space at the back of the garage. Did Neil's gym or a second lounge for the self-contained flat win the day? Hi, hello, how are you? Less than five months ago, the old shop was a dismal shell used for storing junk. Now I'm delighted that Dudley and Jean have a sweet and surprisingly spacious sitting room. This is lovely, isn't it? A really bright, sunny, almost like a garden room, really. It will be nice for you guys, won't it, overlooking the garden? It will be, and thanks to Neil. Yeah. You sacrificed your gym. So I'm just to give her in or I'm just... Oh, <laughs> you, just love, you love to see laws. <laughs> Are you keen on keeping this now that you've got it? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. It's, it's, it's really nice, actually. It's a nice place. We can also spend time in here, so... Be nice. Really nice. Upstairs, the granny flat has a kitchen diner and a double bedroom with ensuite. And despite its modest size, it actually has a great feeling of space. In the main house, with three energetic children taking over the place, Neil and Anita have been desperate for their own haven. So there, they've been creating a master bedroom suite across the whole roof area. Limited budget and time means it's still a work in progress. Such a lovely space up here. I know it's not finished, but 
We've got amazing views out in three directions over the city. Really beautiful. We just didn't imagine, did we, that we'd see this no. much of Bristol. You've been focusing most of your time and energy on the flat for Renita's parents, haven't you? Yeah, it's been a few, few late nights working. Quite a lot of late nights and every weekend. I'm really, really proud of you. Yeah. Aww. And this is brilliant. So you can see right out across Bristol. Yes, yeah. Such a great window. A really good way of really enjoying the space. When the room is finished, the double bed will sit beneath a roof light. Beyond the bed, steps lead to a freestanding roll-top bath on a decked platform. With a door through to a shower ensuite with double basins. This will be a light and airy retreat and a fabulous reward for all the long hours and hard work. It may not have been as easy or as cheap as they'd hoped, but the Greens have fulfilled their wish for a multi-generational family home. You've been very game on and we have teased you quite a lot with this, but you have achieved quite a lot as well, haven't you? I have achieved a lot, yeah. From the start when I was pronounced a lazy DIYer. <laughs> <laughs> He's done well though, hasn't he? He has, he has, though, I have to say. Yeah. But have they managed to create their dream for a fraction of the cost of buying a property nearby big enough for everyone? When you started this project, the house was worth £170,000 and you initially were hoping to spend 50000 How much do you think that you really will end up spending? We're looking at 70000 Where did you find the extra cash? We used definitely the long-term saving that I had and, right. um, you know, put a bit on the credit card. Their ideal home in this area would have cost £420,000 and it would have cost them £250,000 to move to it. But they've managed to create the multi-generational home they were dreaming of for £70,000. They went £20,000 over budget, but that's still a massive saving of £180,000 to get the home they wanted. Interestingly, if you sold the two units separately, which is probably what you'd end up doing if you ever wanted to sell, you'd probably be talking about £90,000 for the smaller unit. And then 170,000 for the house itself, which would be more like 260. So that way, you'd have made a 20,000 pound paper profit in the house. Mm. Um, I think it really works for us, um, and the bonus is that it's added value. I mean, ultimately, you're sitting on a, a very flexible asset, and you know, that asset is worth a lot more than you've invested in it. So I think you've done really well. This project has been a bit of a mission. There's still a long way to go with the loft conversion and the master bedroom, but Granny Jean and Grandad Dudley now have a beautiful flat that they can retire into. And this house is gonna fit this family really well for years to come. Coming up, Russell and Jackie have cause for some celebration. So this is better than you expected? Oh yeah, can't, can't believe be. it's our house. Russell and Jackie Walker are spending £100,000 to create their perfect family home, thanks to savings and a second mortgage. What? All right, all right, all right, all right. But two thirds of the way through the build, Russell was made redundant. It's awful, it's devastating. I'm just getting a little bit upset, Sarah. Oh, God, you poor things. But they held their nerve and carried on. Jackie was obviously gobsmacked and it just sort of like, oh dearie me, what are we going to do? If we stop, when will we start again? If we cut corners and, and I get a job in, say, a month's time, will we look back and think, why did we cut that corner? So everything's going full steam ahead. Luckily, Jackie's job as a pharmaceutical manager means there's still a wage coming in. So it's now going to be floorboard. Right. It's going to be fine. Need it now. And Russell has been able to be full-time project manager and labourer to save money. We need to get really get on with the build. Russell needs to be here from half past seven in the morning 
till six o'clock at night with my dad, you know, and the two of them are really now pushing to get it done. After nearly six months, it's time to see how they've managed. It's taken Jackie and Russell Walker three long years from when they bought their house in Poynton to actually starting the work. And then right in the middle, disaster struck when Russell was made redundant. But their positive attitude and gritty determination, I hope has been enough to get them over the finishing line. The Walker's three-bed 1930s semi, bought for £220,000, had never been updated. Now it's a handsome and grand family home. Those years of the family of four craving more room are now over. Hi, hello, how are you? Lovely to see you. God, this is lovely. So bright it and is. light. Really. Isn't it? Before, their kitchen was so small, most of the appliances lived in the garage. Now their open plan kitchen is four times the size, and that breakfast bar I was worried you'd have to vault over is nowhere to be seen. This is lovely here. Yeah. And you've got the roof light and all of these doors on yeah. in every direction, really. Yeah. Yeah. You have ended up with a really amazing space, and I think the kitchen units really work as well, because at one point you were hoping to have a, a curved uh, peninsula unit, weren't mm. you, this curve? And actually now it's opened up and you can get round the other part of the kitchen really easily. And yeah. There isn't a sense that you're trapped in no, at all. Oh, no, no, not no. at all. The back of the kitchen was nearly going to be a dark corner without natural light. We weren't originally going to have the window above the sink, and we took your advice. Do you know, though I say so myself, that does make a huge difference. Oh, it makes a massive difference. Yeah. Absolutely massive. Great. Then you've got the eating space here, and then the sitting area here with great views down the garden. Mm. With this, now everybody can get together and it's just a, such a more of a social area. It's brilliant. I mean, it is fantastic, but you've had a bumpy ride along the way and obviously mm. being made redundant yeah. must have been a terrible blow, slap in the middle of... of yeah, it was a massive it. shock, but I could focus on this property and we've reduced costs on that basis as well. So you did end up with less money, but you ended up with a lot more, more time. time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The dingy old dining room that Russell also had as an office has turned into a much larger, light and airy sitting room, opening onto the garden. Upstairs, Joseph used to be in a box room that would only fit a cot bed. Now he's got a fabulous double bedroom. Look at that. Now that is the perfect boys' bedroom. How magic. We do plan on changing the box room into a shower room um, and another bathroom, really, but at the moment it's not a priority. No. Until, obviously, I get a job and then that'll be on, the next on the list. The master bedroom isn't finished yet, but what was going to be its oversized dressing room and ensuite is now another double bedroom. And instead of Esme and Joseph having to play with their toys in the lounge, the new bedroom has been turned into their first ever playroom, as they're about to find out. Oh, hi. Oh. <laughs> Did you imagine you'd have your own playroom like this ever? No. Mm -hmm. No. Good. We were just on top of one another all yeah. the time, and the toys and the poor Joseph, his train track, you know, and his cars couldn't be left out, tidy them up, tidy yeah, them up. Yeah, that's put away so. every night, and now he can just leave on the leave floor it out. and get on with it. Yeah. Great. Brilliant. It is. Yeah. It's been a hard and very stressful build, but the gorgeous home Russell and Jackie have created is certainly something to celebrate. When you look at the house now, how do you feel about the house? Oh. Love it. No, I never in my expectation did I think it would be this good. I'm quite, quite proud of ourselves, really, yeah, aren't yeah, we, that we've yeah. done it so well. So this is better than you expected? Oh, yeah. I can't Maybe. believe it's our house. But have they achieved their goal for a fraction of what it would cost to move to a new house of the same size in the same area? 
Now, when you started out, this house was worth about £220,000, mm. and you were going to spend about 100000 on the extension and refurbishment. Mm. Yeah. How much did you end up spending? 80000 <gasps> yeah. 80,000. Yeah. So you reduced the cost yeah. of the bill by 20,000. Yeah. Their dream house was worth 490,000 pounds and it would have cost them 270,000 pounds to move to it. But they've managed to build their own dream home for 80,000 pounds. That's a saving of 190,000 pounds to get the place they wanted. And there's more comforting financial news for this family. I reckon this house would be easily worth 420,000. So mm. you've made 120,000 pounds of equity in the yeah, house. So. Yeah, That's yeah that, is, isn't it? that is really yeah. good. That's a lot of money, a heck of a lot of money. It's a lot of money to have created yeah. as a nest egg in your mm. home. Well, equity that we've got in the property yeah. now, we can look at it and think, well, we have got some money in this yeah. property. So if something does happen, we've got that buffer which is fantastic. So it's just brilliant. It yeah. All round. All round, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Now you just need a job. Do a job, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's it. I'll be yeah. on to him. I'll be on to it now. <laughs> right, get that CV out and get looking for a job. Despite facing financial crisis, Jackie and Russell achieved what they set out to do. They've ended up with a much bigger house that has all the spaces that they were previously missing. A big kitchen, dining, living space and a separate playroom for the kids. And all of that under budget. Mission accomplished.